will be champion. Champion. Now the quest begins. Gay boy. Eldred. A chance they've waited a lifetime for. Glory that comes once every four years. But to reach the Olympics, they must first excel at the U.S. National Championships. Expect fierce competition among the men. Uh, I've had the great fortune of winning five times. Michael Weiss. I've been at the top, I've been at the bottom. I know what it's like. Timothy. As defending champion, I feel more confident going into this Nationals. So greatness waits within them. The favorite, Timothy Gable. He's defeated all the top U.S. challengers this season. The sentimental favorite, Todd Eldridge. I wasn't sure if I'd be sitting here and saying I'm going to go for another one. His 12th trip to nationals will be his last as he seeks that Olympic medal which has been so heartbreakingly elusive. But one man's favored place has fallen, Michael Weiss. Twice the champion, his confidence has never been shakier, having to qualify just to get here. I'm relying on, on uh, experience and the fact that I've been successful at this national championships a number of times. Then, there's the wild card. If Matt Savoy exceeds his expectations, he could extinguish a former champion's hopes while fulfilling his Olympic dream. Four men, three Olympic births. It's the first time that three men who have already been the national champion are trying to be the national champion again. I'm ready for a nail biter. So the quest begins at the U.S. Nationals next. the first time in 48 years the premier event in American skating has come to Los Angeles a city where reality has always taken a backseat to dreams and lofty aspirations inside Staples Center in downtown LA America's best are here to skate for the gold medal as we welcome you to our coverage of the 2002 State Farm US figure skating championships and hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon. We're thrilled to have you with us. You know, since the beginning of the year, every one of the top contenders has had one thought on their mind, to make the U.S. Olympic teams. This is where they earn their ticket to Salt Lake City. And here's how the Olympic selection works. The national champion automatically goes to the Olympics. Then it's based on order of finish here at nationals. Three spots available for the ladies and the men. There are two spots available in pairs and in ice stands. Tonight, we get a look at the men's short program, the pair short program, and a little bit later on, we'll have live coverage of the men's free skate with the gold medal and those three spots on the line here. Our coverage continues. Don't forget to be with us Saturday night. We'll have live coverage of the ladies' free skate and the pairs free skate on ABC Family Channel at 8 o'clock Eastern, and then the rebroadcast of that Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern on ABC Sports. So we are just getting underway, and we welcome in the seven-time U.S. champion to go along with his two Olympic gold medals, Mr. Dick Button. I know you're intrigued by the field in the men's event. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, this championship is kind of fascinating for me because for two reasons. First of all, there are three U.S. champions here. One of them, Timothy Gable, is hoping to defend his title, and two of them, Mike... Michael Weiss and Todd Eldridge are each hoping to regain their titles. Now, since there will be only three spots open for the Olympic Games, there'll be enormous pressure for them and for others like Matt Savoy and Johnny Weir. And now this championship is the toughest of all to win, of all the competition. And that's probably because it's hardest to skate in front of your friends and be judged by your own countrymen, more so than when you go to a world or Olympic competition and are judged by strangers. But one thing is clear, it's a more important championship for you because if you don't have the support and placement of your own country, the rest of the world's judges are going to view your quest with a somewhat jaundiced eye. So it's pressure time, my friends, <laughs> and the moment the knife starts turning in the stomach. So may the best man win. Well, the men's short program has already taken place. Here's how the drama unfolded as the men's event got underway. 
Terry Gannon along with Dick Button as Peter Carruthers joins us a little bit later for interviews. The, the men's short program here, here on the ice on the of the is the 17-year-old from New Lancaster, Delaware. Pennsylvania. Let's welcome now Johnny Weir. Johnny Weir. The 2001 Junior World Champion. Last year at the National Championships, he finished just out of the top five. A sixth place finish for Johnny Weir, but got some great international experience this season. First requirement, circular footwork. You notice all of this footwork creates a huge circle around the center of the ring. He does not do a quadruple, instead a triple lutz, triple toe, two triple jump combination. There's the first landing and second one. That was very good. Had a number of challenges since that World Junior Championship in 2001, most of them coming in the form of injuries. He broke his wrist when he crashed into the boards, mixed six weeks at that point of training. Clean, clean landing. Combination spin. Sit, change, sit. Remember this triple flip, there must be footwork going into it. Here it is, movements, not stopping to create a pretentious ending, beginning. First, running threes into a combination spin. Camel into a sit spin. Back sit spin. Cannonball position, dropped hands. Stretch catch foot. Really a very neat all-around performance with a good completion of all the requirements. And I think the fact that each of those requirements was done cleanly and well will give him a very good standing on these marks. Got a great future, but uh, pretty good right now as well. Only 17 years of age, Johnny Weir. Now this combination right there, triple Lutz, Beautiful revolution in the air. Nice clean edge stepping right up into the triple toe loop coming out of it. That was first rate. Now, one of the requirements is that they must do complicated footwork or at least not stand in a straight edge as we've frequently seen in the past going into a triple jump. And he did that very nicely here going into that triple flip jump. Good clean outflowing edge. And there's a look at the panel of judges working this men's short program. They're all volunteers from across the United States. And, of course, there are eight required elements in the short. The quad is always important, although you don't have to try it here. And this is nervous time for everyone in this short program because for every mistake, there is a specific deduction. For required elements. So we'll see what the judges thought now. The first set of marks for required elements in the mid-five range. Well, I think those are pretty special. And, you know, that whole business about the entrance into the flip is really one of the very nitpicky kind of points to be made. And I, I don't even know whether it meant anything to the judges or not. 
And as, as you look at these marks, Dick, the, for required elements, now presentation, 5.4 to 5.6. He's very early in this men's short program, and they do leave room. So those are impressive. Look at how clear and clean they are right across the gift. That's nice judging when you get everybody in the same category in what they're judging them. On the ice next, 30-year-old Todd Eldridge. Already in select company, he's trying to be the oldest U.S. champion since the 1930s and make a run at his third Olympic team. Eldridge skates next. Back inside Staples Center, Todd Eldridge set to go now. The only medal he has not won in his career, an Olympic medal. He's got to get there first. What began as a dream for a Massachusetts youngster has emerged into quite a career. At 30 years old, Todd Eldridge is now the elder statesman of competitive skating. Five times a U.S. national champion, one world championship, but in two Olympic appearances, no medals. And in this, his 12th trip to nationals, Todd is clearly aware of what's at stake. A final shot at Olympic glory. I think knowing that this is definitely going to be my last try at it, <laughs> um, you know, it will make it very special to know that I'm 30 years old now and, and the oldest guy that's going to be there probably. <laughs> Gives me a good chance to, I think, go out there and, and relax a little bit. Todd's experience and maturity has already paid off in the Grand Prix circuit this season. He finished with a bronze at Skate Canada and a silver at Trophy La Ligue. Yet, the question that seems to follow him at competitions is whether he can win without consistently landing the quad. In any sport, there, there is an element of strategy. If I skate late in the event and the other guys skate early and they make mistakes, there's no sense in, in taking that risk. You know, you just go out and, and do a good performance and a performance that you know is, is going to put you in the position that you want to be in. His strategy is proof that he is a veteran of the sport and one whose intense desire has kept him competitive for over a decade. It's that desire that has motivated Todd to take a final shot at reaching the medal stand in Salt Lake. But he's also prepared if he ends up short of his Olympic dreams. There are definitely more important things in, in life and, and more important things uh, than winning an Olympic medal. And, you know, if I, if I win one, that's great. If I don't, you know, I'm still going to move on, you know, have a great life and definitely have a great career. Seventeen trips to the national championships, 12 of them on the senior level. The man has been here before. He knows what it takes. Todd Eldridge trying to win for the sixth time at this event. Now, before you get into this, just remember, this is where the quadruple jump will count. He will not be able to medal at the Olympics without it. Early in the program, his attempt here, if he puts it in. If he has it planned, it'll be here, a quadruple toe, triple toe. No, triple... Double axle, triple axle. <laughs> now that means he cannot do a triple axle here. Double axle. Remember, you get marked down if you repeat a move. And he changed that program from what he told us earlier. But look at the quality of this back spin right here. Look at how closely centered it is on the ice. Now again, we watch the footwork that he goes here, right going into this triple jump. Continued flow, slight variation, and not a very good triple Lutz that came out of it. It'll be, that just wasn't good quality. It's less a, a matter of a deduction than it is a matter of a lower mark. You see the best in the world at this, though, Dick? In the current world today, he is just... Look at how tight the little turns are, the circle that he's in. That's just centered right in one spot, like you expect to see a top on a table when you're spinning it. 
straight line footwork. Getting much more theatrical, much more effect out of this. Now a huge serpentine footwork. You notice the curve going one way and now going the other. where he's really without peer in the world of skating today is his spinning ability. Look at how the centering is staying in one spot. Camel spin down to a, a cross foot, to a sit spin, to a cannonball position, and now a back scratch with the hands over the head. I gotta tell you, that's the cat's pajamas right there. <laughs> in order to win an Olympic medal, you gotta go to the Olympic Games. That's what he's trying to do here, and he knows how tenuous those top positions are. I mean, you've got to finish basically for the men in the top three to make it to the Olympics. And there are at least four men, if not more, who have legitimate chances to make it there. That's a big hurdle he just got over. But that's also the reason he did not do yep. or try a quadruple jump, although he had expressed the fact early that he would. Now look at this footwork right here into this triple Lutz. He sort of breaks a little break there, right there, but not enough to cause a deduction. But on this, the Lutz, look in the air. Now watch the landing. Way over, way over. He just doesn't have a good solid landing. He almost touches down. And if he did touch down, that would be one-tenth of a point off. But in this final combination spin, it just sings. Look at this. The speed, the centering of it, the control he has, the cannonball position, and this part, the back scratch spin with the hands over the head, which is one of the best in the business today. Here are the judges' marks for Todd Eldridge for Required Elements. Well, Todd, of course, lives just outside of Detroit, but he spent some time. He and Richard Callahan, they were training out here on the West Coast in San Diego for some time. First set of marks now, 5.4 up to 5.7. And you know there's a greater variation there th than there was with Johnny Weir, which I think is a quite an interesting thing. That means there's a divergence of opinion on the part of the judges. Oh, look at these, though. Well, those, are, those are, are, you know, classic, and that's, of course, exactly what's going to pull him up ahead of John Weir at this time. And it did. Currently in first First place, Todd Eldridge. When we come back, Michael Weiss will be out there on the ice trying to get back to the form that won him two U.S. championships and make another trip to the Olympics. First, Dick takes a look at the axle jump, though. The Rule Book of Figure Skating is brought to you by Campbell's. The axle is the only jump to take off going forward. In this double axle, the skater takes off on a forward outside edge and then completes two and a half revolutions. The hardest triple jump is the triple axle. The skater completes three and a half revolutions in the air. The triple axle triple toe loop combination requires tremendous jump technique, including good approach, speed, tight rotation, and controlled landings. night on the ABC Family Channel. Live coverage of the ladies' final. Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, among those looking to go to the Olympics. Saturday night at 8 Eastern and Pacific. Then, the rebroadcast of that Sunday afternoon on ABC Sports at 3 Eastern, 2 Pacific. Right now, Peter Carruthers is standing by with Todd Eldridge. Okay, Todd, the short program's behind you now, but no quad. Why? Uh, you know, I uh, just felt like I wanted to go out and, and do a good, uh, consistent you know, clean short program today and, and uh, keep myself in contention for Thursday. What are you going to do in the free program? Are you going to put the quad in? Yeah, yeah, you know, it was, it was fine today and it's, it's been okay in, in practices. So, uh, you know, I think uh, the, there's a little less pressure for it in the long program. There's no deduction for it if you miss it. So uh, we'll go for it. Only the Olympic gear. <laughs> okay, back up to Terry Gannon. Meanwhile, the men's short program continues with the two-time U.S. champ taking the ice. Michael Weiss from Fairfax, Virginia, certainly has the experience, but it has been a long two-year period since his last gold medal. As the competitive season began for two-time national champion Michael Weiss this year, he vowed that things would be different. 
A foot injury in late 2000 frustrated him all season long and it carried over to the U.S. Nationals where he finished a disappointing fourth. I've never had to come back from losing my title and that's going to be the case this year. So uh, if I do win this U.S. National Championships, it's going to be uh, an incredible amount of emotion for me standing up on that podium on top. To regain his title, Michael will undoubtedly need to improve on his performances from the Grand Prix Series, which included a disastrous eighth place finish in the Nations Cup competition. But in the past, Michael has saved his best efforts for the events in which the stakes are the highest. What I have that, that some other athletes don't have is the ability to perform well at the big events. I have uh, the ability to perform under, under large amounts of pressure at the really important ones. And there is no doubt that competition here is intense, with a spot on the Olympic team on the line. Yet Michael is confident that the success of the past will guide him back to the top. I think it's a lot easier to be a champion and lose it and to come back, because you know what it's like, than to never have, have won at all. Being the national champion twice in the past is going to give me uh, that much more confidence to know that, hey, I've been there before, I'm just trying to get back. Here is Michael Rice. It may be a catch-22 for Michael Weiss. He certainly wants to remember 99 and 2000 when he won his two U.S. gold medals, but he'd like to forget much of what's happened the past year and a half or so. Last year, it was because of injury. That's why he struggled. This year, he just hasn't skated that well. But here he is, 15 pounds lighter, entering this U.S. championship. His plan is to do a quadruple toe, triple toe combination. And if it's going to be, it'll be right here. And it wasn't. He was able to land the quad at the sectionals competition. He hasn't been able to land it very often. But just the fact that he had to go to sectionals to qualify here is a shock. One thing about that attempt at a quad was that it was not a disastrous fall. It was one of those quick down, up and out moves, which will be less difficult for the judges to uh -huh. But he can't do this kind of thing if he's going to make it. I mean, that was a triple axle, and he should have had that one under his belt. This crowd now trying to get him back on his feet. Remember his last trip to Nationals, he had the lead after the short program before he just fell apart in the free skate and came in fourth. Good centering. Well, just not his best performance. You know, uh, uh, really a, a sad mistake on those two, on those two moves. The uh, first one, the quadruple toe, and then on the triple axle. Twice the world bronze medalist, but trying to find that form still here at the national championships michael weiss 
<laughs> now, this is his quadruple toe right here. Look at the stretch back, the toe pick, but already the body right there is leaning so far back that he cannot sustain the landing. Here you'll see it again in this stroh motion look. Now watch as it moves and as he comes down, already he's leaning in, out and back. He cannot hold that seated position and rolls over onto the knee. Now on this triple axle, watch what happens here. Watch the body should go forward into the jump, but already he's leaning backwards, the wrong direction. Have the right entrance, the right takeoff on a jump, and 99% of the time you'll be okay. For Michael Weiss, for required elements. There's his coach, Audrey Wizziger, longtime coach on the right side of your screen, and his wife Lisa on the left. First set of marks now, 4.8 is the low mark here. Now remember, you got a four tenths of a point for the mistake on the quadruple toe and three tenths of a point for the fall on the triple axle. There's seven tenths right off there. Yeah, and with the presentation mark stick, that puts Michael Weiss down in third place. He's behind Eldridge and Johnny Weir. What a disappointment. 5.7. 5.7 and 5.7. Up next, Matt Savoy, who surprised everyone by making it to the podium last year at Nationals. If he does it again, he's going to the Olympic Games. He'll take the ice after this message and a word from our ABC. Here in L.A., skaters are trying to make it to Salt Lake City. They'll be doing the same in slalom, aerials, and cross country on Sunday. The U.S. Ski Team Gold Cup. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 Eastern, 12 Pacific, here on ABC. He represents the Illinois Valley State Skating. Farm U.S. Championship action here at Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles. The short program for the men with Todd Eldridge, the five-time U.S. champ in the lead so far. Johnny Weir in second ahead of Michael Weiss. But here is the reigning U.S. bronze medalist, Matt Savoy. He's a very imaginative skater and a wonderful stylist. Look at the position of this flying camel. You right can here. never forget about this guy, Dick. Last year, all the talk about the big three, Weiss and Gable and Eldridge and Matt Savoy, was able to stand on the podium. His triple axle right here. Beautiful, beauty, beauty. His two jump combination, a triple flip, triple toe, right here. You know, nice, <laughs> nice speed coming out of that. Good flow, no tiny little curled in edge. That's what made it good. 21 years of age from Peoria, Illinois. Has not had the kind of season that he enjoyed last year though. On the Grand Prix circuit, he did not make the Grand Prix Final this year. Full-time student at Bradley University. Right number of turns in that. Remember, he had to do six revolutions on each foot, and he did. He also did it well. Here is the footwork, required moves going into this triple jump, a Lutz right there. A straight line footwork, good energy, good speed, Cirque du Soleil music. It's been perfect position. Look at the stretch of that leg in that half sitting position. Back sit position, camel cannonball, catch foot, and a back scratch, and a really nice performance. You know, no mistakes, very just 
just first rate all the way around. That, I'll bet you a nickel to a plug donut, secures him a place on the Olympic team. Long way to go here in L.A. It, before it's it, over. But, but I like to bet when they're plug donuts. <laughs> if I can find one, I'll bet you that. Go Savoy in a standing ovation for the reigning U.S. bronze medalist. Matt Savoy off to a great start. Now, look at the entrance into this triple axle. Look at him as he goes forward. The body is really quite straight, and that's a good starting position, and that's 90% of the reason why the jump was so first rate. Now, look at this combination, the ending of the program. First the camel, then a half sit spin with the stretched out leg. That's a beauty of a position. Back camel, now watch him drop into a back sit spin. Now cannonball it. Now watch him stretch up into the air with a catch foot position and a back scratch with the hands over the head. Spiffy. And here are the judges' marks. What a performance Matt by Matt Savoy in the most critical event of the year certainly maybe the most critical of his career the first set of marks for required elements there they are dick when they're very good marks you know uh, if you notice uh, i mean they're five sixes and five eights and one five five and those are very nice marks it was a solid all-around performance those are higher than the required element marks for todd El eldridge but look at the presentation marks those are a little bit lower and there are uh, here and there and i think frankly his presentation is really the best in the business so Placements from the judges from first down to third, and Matt Savoy currently in second place, right behind Eldridge. On the ice next, the reigning U.S. national champion, Timothy Gable, trying to make a run at his first Olympic appearance, a dream of his since he watched the great American champions there years ago. I've wanted to skate in the Olympics ever since I can remember. I remember watching skating on TV and watching Scott Hamilton and Brian Boitano. And I always remember wanting, wanting to be like them and, and go to an Olympics and be Olympic champion. And it's something that I've worked for really every day since, since I started skating. Here is Todd Eldridge Timothy has the lead so Gable. far over Matt Savoy and Johnny Weir as Michael Weiss is down in fourth place here at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships, the men's short program setting the table for the free skate. Here's the reigning champ, Timothy Gable, on the ice. Not only trying to repeat as the men's champion, but also make his first Olympic team. And he's known for his quadruple jumps. Look at this quadruple sal cow. Triple toe. Now that's the tightest, cleanest, quickest revolution in the air that you'll see. Very fast. Superb revolution. This a triple axel. Now watch him step up into this. The revolution is in the air. That's really brilliant, the tightness of those turns. He makes it look so easy, Dick. Footwork here into a triple flip. And that also complete. Timothy Gable, originally from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, was then in Cleveland, but has been with Frank Carroll since May of 2000 out here in the L.A. area in El Segundo. little slip off there that was a catching of an edge and I doubt that that will cause any deduction in a mark whatsoever oh but that mm. one will now that was again the same thing but this was a much more serious one and it occurred right in the middle of the serpentine footwork which is I mean that will really cause a deduction the sit change sit
good back position, much better than it was a few months ago, or even a year ago. Now this straight line footwork right here. Butterfly to a back sit spin. Good position, now watch him pull it up into the air. Back scratch. End. Started so well, but then the struggles in the middle of that program. But you know, I'm, I'm told that there'll be a, as much as a three-tenths of a deduction for the fall during the footwork. Uh, that seems kind of excessive, but I guess that's what the rules are, that's what it'll be. Certainly the first slip should not cause anything. But this, very little margin for error, as Michael Weiss has found out. But also the rest of his triple jumps, quadruple jumps, were so magnificent that I'm sure he'll uh, be right up there to allow for deduction. We'll come back with his marks in a moment. The State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships on ABC Sports, brought to you by... State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Zocor. Talk to your doctor about Zocor today. Smart ones. When you're smart. And four first for Timothy Gable. And the same separation goes down between second and third places. So there's an exact tie. First time in recent memory. Two tied at the top here. Both are with Peter Carruthers right now. Okay, Terry. Well, usually you're talking to one leader after the short program but in this case two u.s champions and a tie for first after the short programs are you too surprised with this totally uh you know i saw him skate he skated well and and uh i, I don't think i've ever been in that situation where i've been tied after a short program so it's it's kind of cool actually todd you're trying to win your sixth u.s title what's the pressure like uh it's it's not that bad actually you know i mean you know it's there's always pressure to go out and skate your best but uh you know, I'm just going out there and, and do, do what I can. If I win my sixth, that's great. If not, and he, he takes his second, then, uh, you know, that's fine as long as we both get to the Olympics. Well, what's it like for you trying to repeat this year? Well, uh, this year I'm really just worried about uh, trying to get a spot on the Olympic team. I mean, that's really my goal this year. Uh, and I don't want to put the pressure of, of defending my national title on top of trying to make the Olympic team. So I just want to come in and skate well and uh, got through the short pretty well and hopefully do a good long and get one of the top three spots. So now you guys got to battle it out in the free program. <laughs> hopefully no more ties. <laughs> well, good luck in the free program. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's join Terry Gannon now. All right, Peter, thank you. So for the first time since at least the compulsory figures were done away with, there is a tie after the short program at Nationals what a free skate that's going to be. Live coverage of that free skate comes up a little bit later. Coming up later, the pair's short program as Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman skate for their third straight national title. We'll also have a preview of the ladies' competition when we continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And a good look down on Staples Center here in downtown Los Angeles. These aerial pictures courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. Don't forget our coverage of the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships continues Saturday night on the ABC Family Channel. Live coverage of the Ladies Free Skate beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Then the rebroadcast of that on ABC Sports Sunday afternoon starting at 3 o'clock Eastern. And we welcome you back inside Staples Center. Hi again, everybody. Terry Gannon with you. The ladies will take this very ice right behind me Saturday night. And for many of them, it will be the most important four minutes of their careers so far. Only three spots are available for the ladies on those Olympic teams. The top three will compete in Salt Lake City. Right now, let's meet the major players. Here in Los Angeles, time is running out as five young women stand at a competitive crossroads. You I have four minutes, one chance, and I know that I can't redo it. To have that chance to be able to represent the U.S. at the Olympics, it's just always been a dream of mine since I was eight years old. In your I think of myself as kind of 
almost a long shot to make the Olympic team because there's so many great skaters. I've always been a perfectionist and I've always put a lot of pressure on myself. As blue as the sky. When I step onto the ice at Nationals this year, I'm just gonna let it go. In your An impressive field indeed, including 17-year-old Jenny Kirk, who enjoyed her first experience at Nationals as a spectator seven years ago. It was so exciting to see the skaters. I just remember thinking, all I want to do is be them. I want to be on the ice, and I want all these people looking at me. Last year, in her hometown of Boston, Jenny finished fourth. But life ever since has been a challenge for the 2000 Junior World Champion. This past year has been really hard with my mom passing away. She always told me that I should just believe in myself and that I can do anything I want to do. And I carry that with me all the time, so I never feel alone. I feel like when I step on the ice, she's with me and she's proud of me. Sasha Cohen, she's daring, she has moxie, and she's completed in practice what no other woman has ever landed in competition, a quad. I'm a strong competitor because I don't settle for anything and I won't be completely happy till I'm number one. So, you know, it just, it's going to be hard to get there, but I, I realize that and I'm willing to do what it takes. Two years ago at Nationals, she captured the skating world's affections with an elegant performance and a silver medal. But last year, she was relegated to the role of spectator, sidelined by a back injury. Now, Nationals has come to her backyard. And though she'll most likely leave the quad at home, Sasha is ready to shine. I am nervous, but everyone is, and I just figure that everyone's in the same boat. And I just have to know that I've prepared for it and be confident. Like Cohen, when Angela Nikodinov is on, watch out. She showed her potential last year at Nationals with a bronze medal. When I stood on the podium last year at Nationals, it was more of a personal triumph. And uh, going through so much over the previous years with my skating, with injuries, and, um, you know, finding that new love for the sport. That renewed enthusiasm was instilled by her coach, Elena Cherkaskaya a former ballet dancer with the Bolshoi, who passed away this November. She has taught me um, to be confident in myself, and I just feel like that's what I've been missing in my skating, and she's helped me find that. Now, she's turned to legendary coach Frank Carroll for guidance. A clean skate Saturday night could close a circle that began 14 years ago. I was eight years old, it was the 88 Olympics in Calgary, and it was kind of when I just started competing, and you know, I remember watching Katarina, but you know, I would learn her programs in my room, I'd study them, I'd just go over them in my room by myself, and I just knew that I wanted to be there someday. Exhibiting dogged determination, Sarah Hughes has quickly made strides. Now. The youngest of the group must be considered a legitimate challenger for gold. After defeating both Michelle Kwan and Russia's Arena Slutskaya earlier this year at Skate Canada. At first I couldn't even fathom it. To stand on top of the podium is, is the most amazing feeling. You can't explain it, you can't put it into words. And hearing the anthem played, it, there aren't words to describe it. For those who believe in trends, just look at Sarah's numbers. At Nationals, she's improved every time, from fourth in 99 to a silver-plated effort last season. I feel a little bit of added pressure this year because I have always wanted to make the Olympics. and I'd really like to go, not only for to represent our country, but for my family and for my coach and for everybody who's put so much work into me and believed in me. The depth of this ladies' field is extraordinary, and somehow each challenger's story has threads to the champion. Kirk was inspired by her. Cohen was once primed to overtake her. Nikodinov now trains with her former coach. And Hughes is the only current American ever to defeat her. So while all will be chasing Michelle Kwan, Michelle Kwan will be chasing history. Within her sights, 
a sixth national title in front of her hometown fans that would elevate her past Peggy Fleming, Janet Lynn, and Tenley Albright. When I'm standing on the podium and I hear the national anthem, there's a lot of things that go through my mind. I mean, my family, my friends, flashbacks of when I was younger. My heart you've grown. I remember that face from the childhood days too. Just wait and see. I remember watching Brian Mortano win the 88 Olympics and I remember clapping and cheering and dancing around my living room. She was only seven years old then. Now, Nagano's silver medalist looks to fulfill every skater's dream of Olympic gold. But first, she looks to steal the national spotlight one more time. A stage with so many wondrous memories. Remember the perfect sixes in 98. What a magnificent moment She is that. absolutely brilliant. She just takes your breath away. Or even last year, when she neared perfection with her short program in Boston. She has done it again. Six. Seven <laughs> perfect Six. sixes. My gosh. Still, no skater has ever won nationals without a coach. And after severing ties to Frank Carroll in October, Michelle has stumbled. But she is often at her best when tested. And in this, most likely her final trip to nationals, one challenge remains, to touch gold once again. If she thinks about our lives, mystery, and how slowly the answers unfold. She's the coming gold. When I was younger, I thought the medals meant the most to me. Now as I'm older, the thing that means the most is the sport. You know, just have fun with it. What I do on the ice feels like it's a gift. Five women, three Olympic berths, one national championship. Saturday night, history waits as time runs out. And back now inside Staples Center, where just a short time ago, the ladies' short program took place. The ladies beginning their quest toward a national championship, and it proved just how strong and how deep this American contingent is. It was Michelle Kwan, the five-time national champion, taking the ice first among the contenders, and she was absolutely brilliant, bringing back memories of her 98 performance at nationals. Then, the 16-year-old Sarah Hughes, who came in second last year, and she was awfully strong, too. Another standing ovation. She would be in second place when she left the ice. Then another local product, Angela Nikodina from nearby San Pedro. She's had to deal with the death of her coach, Elena Cherkaskaya. She's now led by Frank Carroll. Extremely successful here in the short. She was in third place. But it was 17-year-old Sasha Cohen who absolutely brought down the house. Out last year with a back injury, in 2000, she was the silver medalist at Nationals, and what a performance here in the short program. It rivaled Michelle Kwan's. In fact, she would end up in second. So your standings after the short program, Michelle Kwan in the lead. Then Sasha Cohen in second place, Sarah Hughes and Angela Nicodina, if remember, three make the Olympic team. The Ladies Free Skate Live comes up Saturday night on ABC Family Channel at 8 Eastern, then the rebroadcast Sunday afternoon on ABC Sports at 3 Eastern. Still to come tonight, live coverage of the men's free skate later, but up next, the pairs begin their quest for a national title when we come back.